Hey everyone, I'm Jason Peacock and this time I'm doing a review on Viticulture Essential Edition. Now this is a game from uh, Stonemeyer Games designed by Jamie Stagmeyer, Alan Stone and Morton Monrad Pedersen. It plays one to six players, so uh, typical with Stonemeyer games, there's an auto mod deck. And I'm not going to be talking about that much because I haven't played it yet. It plays in 45 to 90 minutes. Now this game is, as the title implies, all about making wine. You're going to plant your fields, you're going to harvest your fields, crush the grapes and then turn the grapes into wine. You're going to have to build cellars to really house your, um, your good stuff. It's a worker placement game. Let me get into how it plays and then I'll come back and I'll talk about the game. At the start of the game, every player is going to get a mama and a papa card. This is giving you your starting workers, money, and possibly buildings. So if you look at this pop-up card right here, you get your grande worker and three gold, and then you can either take another regular worker or three gold. You've got Margaret the mama here. She gives you another two workers and then two vine cards and a uh, yellow visitor card. But once you get your resources, these cards go back to the game box you don't need anything else. This first player grape token passes around clockwise every turn. The first player places their chicken on one of the spots and you go in clockwise order placing your chicken beside the bonus you want. Now this is spring. This is uh, one of the four seasons of a game turn. Um, if they take the first slot, they're placing their worker first. They'll go first in each of the two placing seasons, summer and winter. If you go 2nd to 7th, you're going to get the bonus listed beside it. So if I went 6th, I would get a uh, victory point. If I went 7th, I would have another worker that I can use for the year. Let's look at our player board. You've got three fields for growing grapes. This field can hold five worth of uh, value, worth of grapes, six and seven. The reason these are cards floating on top is because they can be sold during the game for some money and repurchased. And on your player board, this is where you're gonna put certain buildings. It's where you're going to harvest grapes from your, your vineyards and put them in your crush pads. So these little flat semicircle uh, markers sit on your grapes and then when you turn your grapes into wine you're also using these to mark your value of wine. I will get into all of that. You'll notice there's even a action space you can put on your own board with the construction of a yoke building. It lets you harvest a field above and beyond what is actually on the player board. So let's get back to the game board. Once everybody's placed their chicken on the wake up chart Starting with whoever's highest on this chart will get their bonus and then they can place their first worker. You'll see every action spot has three spots to put a worker in. If you're playing a two player game, only this leftmost spot is used. If you're playing a three, four player game, it's the first two. And if you're playing a five, six player game, you're using all three spots. So during the summer, players can play, take turns placing their workers. Um, you can build a structure. Now these little bonuses, like if we were playing a 3-4 player game and a worker went there first, you simply get to take whatever bonus is listed. There is no bonuses on just a 2 player game. It's just straight up action spots. So you can build a structure, give a tour to gain $2, drawing a green card. This is how you get your field started. These green cards all have different breeds of wine. You've got a Pinot here. It's got a to This first player grape token passes around clockwise every turn. The first player places their chicken on one of the spots and you go in clockwise order placing your chicken beside the bonus you want. You have to have those buildings constructed. Playing yellow cards. These here are summer visitor cards. You have to go there if you want to play one from your hand. And as far as when you draw them, whenever we move to the fall season, 
we are going to grab either a blue or a yellow card. It's our pick. You can also gain one for the number five spot on the board. Now these cards are cool. We've got the plant out there. Plant up to two green cards and gain one gold. Or uproot and discard one green card to gain two, two victory points. Having cards giving you victory points in ways other than producing wine is always great. Contractor, choose two. You can gain a victory point, you can build a structure, or you can plant a green card. Now these cards can be super powerful because they can give you actions to do that you don't require placing a worker on the board. Really a good way to keep tricks up your sleeve on the other players. Gain five lira. Each opponent must lose one victory point to gain three lira. There's a deck of, let's see, maybe I think 20 cards in the, in the base game alone. When you get here, you can sell at least one grape or buy or sell one field. This is where you would flip over your three different fields and get some cash for it. And you cannot use them until you buy it back. And if it has vines on it, you cannot sell it. So grapes, four, five, and six level, you'd get two for selling one of those. Seven, eight, nine, you'd get three. And the one, two, three, you would get one for. And finally, this is how you plant some of your green cards onto your field. You would take those cards. Your three fields here will hold these green cards. So if I wanted to plant this here, I would be, first of all, I'd have to have these two buildings. And second of all, the value of my grapes total can't exceed the field. So I can place a one value grape in that field, but nothing more. This is a two value because it produces one red and one white. So I would have to put that there if I was planting it. It's definitely efficient if you can have exactly five, six, or seven in each of the fields. That explains the different summer actions. Moving into the fall, a player can either pick to draw a yellow or a blue. I find I'm generally drawing yellow cards during the first half of the game and in the later turns I'm more attracted to the blue cards. Let's see what some of these can do. Teacher, make two wine tokens or pay two dollars to train a worker. So you're getting a worker for half price. Taster, discard a wine to gain four gold. If it is the most valuable wine in any player's cellar, no ties, gain two victory. Nice. Choose to make one. Choose to make up to two wines. Fill one purple card or discard any wine token to gain two victory. I mean, these things are just awesome and almost all of them will give you ways to get quick and easy victory points or to make wine tokens without having to um, go through the worker placement board. Once we draw a card, we're into the final stage of the, the game turn. We've got the blue action. So drawing a purple card can be something you, you can do. Um, if we're playing a three to four player game and I went there, I could draw two purple cards. Harvesting one field. This is taking your vines that have already been planted and turning them into grapes. If I had this decided to harvest this field, I've got a four plus a one value wine, so that's a five wine. So this would go onto my five slot and I've got a one value red. You just total up the two colors like I just did. And if you're playing a three, four player game and you can harvest two fields, you can do that with two of them. Um, playing a blue card. Okay, drawing a purple card. This is the main way to get victory points. These are visitor cards. These give you different values of wine to aim for. This is the victory points. This is the residual money you would get. And I'll explain that at the end of the season. This is what you need to discard. You need to get a value six wine and discard it from your seller. And you're gonna get three victory points and one residual for doing that. Uh, this one here is worth five victory points and two residuals for getting a nine sparkling wine, which is the most expensive to make. And I will explain that next when we get to making up the two wine tokens. This is where you would take your wine tokens. This would be a token. I'd convert that into a five white if I had the seller constructed 
or it would just max out as a three. And this one red would become a red white wine. If I want to make this blush or a sparkling wine, there's a little uh, key here. So one, one red grape plus, plus one white grape. If I had these here, a four and a five, I mix these together, that's a total of a nine. I would have a nine blush. Same thing with a sparkling wine, two red wines plus one white will equal either a seven, eight or a nine. Having the blushes and sparkling wines are definitely worth big points if you can find the right wine order visitor cards for it. You're trying to get the most valuable wine in your cellar and cashing in the, them in for victory points with those visitor cards. The next action in the winter season is uh, to pay $4 to train a worker. This is standard in worker placement games. Uh, pay money to get another worker. Uh, you start with maybe three or four and you can have up to a total of six altogether. Um, filling a purple card. This is what I was just explaining about uh, when I talked about drawing them. That's how you get your victory points. Um, and this universal one, you just go there to simply gain $1 for people that really ran their business into the ground. There's a spot for you. I always feel ashamed if I got to go to that spot. At the end of the year, we age all our grapes and wine. Everything is going to slide one. This three would go to a four grape. This four wine would turn into a five. Doesn't matter how much you have, everything moves down one. Then we take all of our workers back. We collect our residual payments. So this little wine token, every time you fill an order that has a one or a two at the bottom, you start moving this up. That's money that you're gonna start taking at the end of every year, maxing out at five. Then you you have to discard down to seven, whether it's uh, summer or winter visitors, or um, the purple cards for filling an order or your vines. Doesn't matter what's in your hand, you've got to discard down to seven. And then finally, the first player token gets passed and everyone goes down the wake up chart again. You keep going until one player crosses the 20 point mark. And then at the end of that year, whoever is furthest ahead is the winner. So that's viticulture. And if I can sum this game up in a word, it would be, wow, I love this game. I am blown away by how much I like this game. Let's start about exactly what it is I like about this game. Um, yeah, so first of all, the Grande Worker. You've always got that one worker that can give you any action you want. That is such a nice feature in a worker placement game. If you've already used your Grande, you can get that frustration where there's not a lot enough spots left to get that action you want, but saving that grande for the one action you desperately need is great. I like the, um, the turn order. The further behind you go, the better the benefits you're gonna get, but that being said, you're also gonna get last pick of available actions. I tend to just go for the victory point until everybody else is kind of wise up to me and starts taking that spot on me. My very favorite thing about this game is the visitor cards. Those yellow and blue cards make this game for me. There's so many cool benefits and abilities and strategies that these things can employ. Every time I grab one off the top, there's usually something exciting that can be had from these. And I think they are absolutely essential to a victory in this game because if you ignore those visitor cards and other players aren't, it doesn't matter how efficient you're going, somebody's going to have some awesome trick up their sleeve that's going to leave you behind in the dust. So my very favorite thing about this game, and there's even more of these visitor cards with the Tuscany expansion, the essential Tuscany expansion, and the Moor visitors which just has more yellow and blue visitor cards designed by Uwe Rosenberg. So I've got those on the way. Gimme, gimme, gimme. I, the more variety in these, the better. So I just absolutely love getting some of these uh, visitor cards and shaping my long-term strategy over what I've, what I've grabbed. You can be way behind in this game, but there's still no runaway leader. I was... 
I was up just getting ready to cross the 20 line and my friend who was dead last gained I don't know how many points in the last turn and actually won the game and snagged the victory from me. And everybody at the table just, hey, great win. Like 10 shakes, props, he deserved it. Played brilliantly. So you can definitely save up for that great strategy at the end. So that's another great thing about this game. The fact that it plays up to six players is is great. Like for a worker placement game like this to accommodate six people and I've played at six players and I'll play this game at literally any player count. I haven't played the Automa yet, the uh, the solo, but I'm going to start playing it because I want to I want to get some practice. I want to get get good against the people I'm playing this game with all the time. Um, now a friend bought this game and uh, I was able to play his copy. I've heard for years how good this game was, but you know that even though making wine is a unique theme in games, it still came off as a dry one for me. But before the game was even over, I had already ordered my own copy with the expansion and every other little promo thing I can get my hands on. I cannot say enough good things about this game. I really like the different structures. Again, they can they can tailor to a particular strategy. One thing I won't bother with anymore is the tasting room. Getting a victory point every time you uh, you do a wine tour just didn't work for me. I chose to start with the tasting room from the mamas and papas rather than the five gold. By the end of that game, man, I was wishing I had the five gold instead of that tasting room. Now, I've never played the original Viticulture before they, they took parts of the Tuscany expansion and melded it into this Essential Edition. Um, so I don't I can't comment too much on the differences. I know the, the Mamas and Papas cards at the beginning is just part of the game now, and that was originally part of the Tuscany expansion. So the variable st startup is, is great. Like maybe you'll get an extra worker, maybe you'll get a building, maybe you'll get a ton of money. All good things. So this is probably my favorite worker placement game. In fact, this game is probably in my top five games of all time. It's probably in my top three, to be honest. And now I like my worker placement games just fine, but this game has ignited a love and excitement for more worker placement games. Now I'm looking at all of these different ones and going, oh, that looks exciting, this looks exciting. So, I cannot say enough good things about it. So, uh, let's try and find a couple negative points. Um, okay, if I want to get nitpicky, the little grape tokens, they're awesome, but they can easily slide around on your player board. And if someone leaves forward and hits it with their sleeve or something, you might not necessarily remember where everything was. It would be nice if they took the scythe approach and had little indentations in the... Uh, the slot like a double layered board so they saw it sat in snugly and didn't move and the the game box says 45 to 90 minutes that's true if you're playing two three players but I've played uh, five and six player games that were well over two hours uh, six player game went three now granted a couple of us have kids and we've got to take our kids breaks every now and again, but six player game, I cannot see lasting 90 minutes. I can't see it. I've had about um, close to 10 plays of this in already. And there is an expansion for this, the uh, uh, Tuscany Essential Edition. If you guys are interested in hearing my thoughts about what that adds to the game, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a follow up video on the uh, the Tuscany Essential Expansion Edition. So, um, gushing all over this game, I cannot say enough good things about it. I hope that this video might inspire uh, other people to take the plunge and see exactly why I think this is a phenomenal game. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm Jason Peacock, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. 
cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com.